So welcome to Comet here at Semicon West. I'm delighted to be joined by the Onus van den Ven, who is the president of the, at least the X-ray uh, part of the Comet business. Excellent. Comet Exelon. Okay, yes. great. So nice to meet you, uh, nice Dionis. Uh, so we're standing here in front of uh, uh, a display which is, is showing uh, some of the results from your latest um, X-ray system that you launched last year. Uh, that's the, uh, I can't remember the name. CA20. CA20. Okay, thank you for that. Um, tell us, first of all, before we get into this, about some of the key features that you introduced with the CA20 last year. Okay, so the CA20 in itself has the ability to make the most brightest pictures you can imagine mm -hmm. of the inside of anything you want to see, but dedicated to the semiconductor market. I see. And the challenge is always to make things visible that are really captured by maybe another part mm -hmm. in a most efficient way. And based on the images you make, you have to create fact-based decision-making data where your customer at the end can make decisions on to drive productivity, mm -hmm. reduce costs, increase yields. Yes. Uh, and that's what the CA20 all has inside. Right. Of course, the, the, you know, the X-ray system, standalone X-ray system, is known to be, or thought to be, quite a slow process in many ways. Uh, have you introduced some methodologies within the CA20 to be able to increase the, the, the throughput of, of inspection? Uh, and the decision-making capability for the for the engineer. Yes, uh, without revealing all, I would say, mm -hmm. the, the the goodies, uh -huh. uh, we have introduced methods to increase speed of image acquisition, okay. as well as data analysis. And not only that, we have increased also the clarity of our images, so that you actually see more with less dose. Okay, so you, you see more with, with less less sort of noise and interference, basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. So we're seeing a couple of samples here behind us. I mean, the, the images are very, very sharp and very clear. Uh, it's certainly uh, uh, very nice. So when you say you developed it specifically for the semiconductor business, what sort of defect, uh, defects are you typically looking for? Yeah, we see uh, defects in the size of 65, 30, 12, 6 micrometers, mm -hmm. and they all possess always the challenge of is there an interconnect, is there a good quality interconnect, is there no interconnect. Uh, for example, head in pillow, one of the prominent yeah. uh, uh, defects is something that you actually cannot detect with a functional tester, mm -hmm. but it maybe it will fail over time. Yes. Uh, that is very critical in this business to make sure that all your interconnects are quality interconnects. Yes. But we can see head and pillow, bulge, shift, uh, planar, all these kind of things that are important mm -hmm. to help the customer to say, hey, this product has the highest quality standard. Right. Now, I, I believe with the CA20 you introduced a, a series of insights uh, which helps the, the operator with the decision-making process. Can you explain to our viewers a little bit how the Insight system works? Yeah, so we have integrated in our CA20, what you see here behind me, mm -hmm. the Dragonfly platform. Okay. So every Insight that we create in the CA20 is powered by Dragonfly. Mm -hmm. And Dragonfly is, uh, is based on an AI deep learning model to actually capture very quickly models, create models that are trained with a supervisor mm -hmm. and then apply in the production process. Now the key is to have this type of information into a workflow in the CA20. So with a recipe of what you want to inspect mm -hmm. and the backbone of Dragonfly, you get very quickly these insights. So basically the Dragonfly system uh, inspects, does it inspect the whole board or does, it, or does it inspect regions of interest? Regions of interest. Regions of interest. Yes. So, Having gone to that region, if it, if it sees anything it identifies as it could be a defect, then it flags it up for closer inspection by, by a human. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, you have assisted defect recognition mm -hmm. and you have automated defect recognition. Okay. And the automated defect recognition becomes vital in FAP solutions. So when you are in line, you want to see all the data very quickly, mm -hmm. fed back into an MES system, but yeah. maybe still a supervisor, a supervised the expert can have a look at the data and makes then this final decision, but the system is an automated defect recognition system. 
Excellent. Okay. Well, it sounds pretty pretty comprehensive. I mean, and how much time is that is that helped to save in in the uh, process in the inspection process? So you have actually several aspects. So in the development process, in the ramp up phase, and in the volume phase. Mm -hmm. So in the development process, you would like to have very quickly feedback on your design. Yeah. That. Uh, is also enabled with this type of system because you can test designs and see if the production process works. Mm -hmm. Then in the ramp-up phase where uh, yield is really sometimes a catastrophe, mm -hmm. you want to have very quickly feedback to ramp up your yield. And then in the volume phase, you want to have a statistic process control to make sure that your process does not run out of the boundaries that you've set. So right. and every in every phase, we increase speed mm -hmm. of data acquisition Mm -hmm. increase speed of data analytics yep. to make actually the ramp up time shorter and the volume phase faster and the ramp up of the ramp up phase faster and the volume phase more stable wow wow that's power sounds like a very powerful system uh, to be honest to be honest so, exactly. uh, uh, so that's that's great so where do we go from here what's what's next for 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 comet inspection? now in the continuous drive to get things smaller and smaller and we love tiny structures it's mm -hmm. one of our core passions yeah uh, there is no end so the next best thing is a, a new feature that has maybe only a two micro bump uh, two, with, two a micro. with a defect of 100 nanometer right. and we are continuously pushing the boundaries. Right, right. And that's what you can expect over the coming years from us. Yes. And the, the whole support of Moore's Law, writing smaller lines, stacking chips on top of each other, yep. supporting this continuous growth in computational power, yep. that is supported with the CA20. Yeah. I mean, the, the industry is expanding quite a bit um, by, by technology. I mean, there's so much innovation coming out at the moment. Uh, uh, and one of the areas that, that is changing is is also they're looking at the different types of substrates. I mean, we're, we're going from silicon uh, into silicon carbide, you know, talk about uh, gallium nitride and perhaps even glass. Are you looking ahead at these types of substrates in areas to, to see how you can inspect them? Uh, we are fortunate that we work with the key players in the market and mm -hmm. they push our limits. So we see what's coming up next. Yeah. And of course, when you go to maybe uh, silicium carbide in mm -hmm. power electronics, a different type of challenge, I would say, yeah. with respect to maybe a chip on substrate or a chip on wafer. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue actually stay ahead together with our customers on these challenges. Excellent, excellent, okay. Well, it sounds like you're going in the right direction, Dionysus, and I want to thank you for uh, sharing that with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.